Hey guys, welcome back. So today in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at Corellium once again. Now I've already covered this in a couple of videos a few months back, but now I do actually finally have access to the platform myself. So I'm gonna show you guys a kind of live demo of me walking through the process of setting up a virtualized iPhone and showing you guys some of the cool features that you can do with uh, with the Corellium platform. Uh, also at the end of the video, I'm gonna be announcing the giveaway winners for the free copies of my book, Beginner's Guide to Exploitation on ARM. So if you entered the giveaway in the last video and uh, you wanna see who wins, then stick around to the end of the video for that and I'll be picking the free random winners. Um, but anyways, let's go ahead and get started. So for those of you who don't know what Corellium is, um, they are a, an upcoming um, company providing um, a virtualized iPhone hardware platform, which um, gives developers and researchers the ability to create um, their own virtualized iPhones that um, act in the same way as a real iPhone would, um, but it gives them a lot more customization and freedom with what they can actually do with the devices. So you'll see what I mean in a minute, but here is their Twitter account if you want to follow them to see some updates about this. Um, and then I'm actually already logged in over here on the Corellium site. So you can see this is my um, homepage, this is my account. And I currently have no devices, but we're going to go through walk through the process of creating one. So to create a new device, we're going to click on um, the create new device button up here, and then we're going to select the project that we want to do this in. So each project gives you access to six CPU cores, and then each device you want to create will use a specific amount of CPU cores. So that will determine how many devices you can have um, basically active at once. So I'm just going to make this a bit bigger as well, so you can see it clearer. So we're going to select uh, the project. I've only got one project. I'm assuming you can um, have a, a more premium account to have more projects. I'm not really sure on that, but um, I've got this one project here with six unused CPU cores. So we're going to click on that and then click on select. And then it's going to bring you to the device selection screen. So we can choose which device we want to, um, uh, want to create basically as a virtualized iPhone. And uh, you can see underneath the name, it will actually tell you how many CPU cores it's going to use. So aside from the high-end devices being the iPhone 10, the iPhone 8 Plus and the iPhone 8, the rest of them only use two CPU cores. So that means you can have three of these devices active at once if you want to have a few different ones on different versions. Uh, you can create multiple ones at the same time. Um, but if you want to create one of the high-end devices, then you're going to only be able to have one run at the same time because they used all of the CPU cores. So we're just going to go ahead and create an iPhone 10 just for the sake of the video. So we click on that, click Select, and then we get to the OS, selection, uh, OS version selection uh, screen. So here you can choose the version of iOS you want to run, and you can also choose whether you want it pre-jailbroken or not. So in the drop-down menu here, we have support for versions all the way from 11.1 .1, all the way up to 12, uh, beta 1. And um, so we're just going to use iOS 12. And then down here we can choose whether we want it jailbroken or not. So if you have the jailbroken option applied, it will basically apply some predefined patches to the kernel that give you a kind of bare bones jailbreak functionality on this virtualized device. And if you want it non-jailbroken, then it will be exactly as it would be on a, a stock iOS 12 device. So we're going to go with jailbroken, and I'm going to click select. And now we are on to a little uh, summary page. It shows you what you've done so far. We can give this device a name if you want to give it a custom name. Um, and then down here we have the advanced boot options. Now this is a very cool feature down here. This can be very useful to advanced researchers um, who want to mess around with more of the low level things uh, of their device that they wouldn't normally be able to do if the, if the device was a physical device. So if we click on this, you can see we have these different tabs at the top. And this gives you so much customization um, over the lower level components of the device. So first of all, uh, the general tab, we have the ability to customize the boot args that will be passed to the kernel during the boot. Now normally, if you were to have a physical device and you want to pass boot args, you need to have an iBoot exploit or lower, so an iBoot or a bootarm exploit essentially, to be able to pass boot args to the kernel. Now this has not been possible since the days of the iPhone 4, which was many years ago. Um, so to be able to actually do this on a 64-bit device running the latest iOS 12 is actually very, very cool. Um, and it wouldn't be possible without this platform. So here's some of the boot args it puts in by default. It gives you the dash v boot arg for verbose boot if you want to have the verbose um, log output to be um, so you can see what's going on behind the scenes of the boot process. And you can also add uh, any of the other boot args you may need for debugging purposes and stuff like that. Um, so the SEP section, this is the next bit. This one's actually grayed out at the moment, so I'm assuming they're working on that currently, so I won't be able to show you guys that at the moment. Uh, if we go over to the kernel section, uh, here again you can determine whether you want a jailbroken or unjailbroken kernel, and if that's not enough customization for you, then you can actually upload your own custom kernel, so if you want to use your own sort of specified um, kernel patches or you want to test a specific thing that you're working on, then you can actually upload your own kernel binary and it will run this on the virtualized device. So uh, as long as it's unencrypted and uncompressed, this will work. Um, we have the trust cache section, which allows you to put your own hashes for your own binaries or apps, uh, which will get um, immediately put into the Aimify trust cache, which if you don't know, that allows the app essentially to run without um, 
being rejected uh, because it won't be signed. So you can run any binaries and apps you're working on. Um, device tree, I've not looked into this one yet, but um, I'll leave that one up to you guys when this platform is available to the public. RAM disk, you can upload a custom RAM disk file. And device IDs, this is, this is to do with the UDID of the virtualized device. So we're just gonna close that. I'm not gonna mess with any of those details. And we're gonna create the device. And you'll see now we get a little progress update. It says create in and we have like 6%. So this could take sort of up to 10 minutes, I think it recommends. Um, so obviously depending on your speed of your connection, but I'm just gonna leave this going for a minute and I'll be back once it is booted up. So the virtual phone has now been created and you can see now instead of the progress update, it says uh, on with a little blue dot. Um, so all we have to do now is actually to click on it and it will take you to this device's screen. So at the moment it's going through the uh, restore process. It's actually flashing iOS 12 from the IPSW. And if we click connect to display, this will give us the uh, ability to see the screen of the device. So you can see it's going through the regular sort of Apple restore process. Um, and this takes as long as it would take with an iTunes restore on a physical device because it acts exactly the same way, uh, basically. So um, once this is done though, we'll be booted up into iOS 12. And uh, this console area, this will remain here. This will give you still a live kind of log of what's going on in the background while you're using the device. Um, so, and you can also run uh, commands directly through this if you want. Uh, we also have the Cycrypt option or script, I don't know how you pronounce this, um, where you can actually attach to running processes in the user land and um, debug them and manipulate them. Uh, so it's a runtime modification sort of thing. Um, if you want to test some stuff in user land, and um, then we'll go over the kernel debugging and SSH after that. So I'm just going to wait for this to finish restoring. The device is now booted up and you can see we're on the iOS 12 lock screen. I'm going to swipe up to unlock and you can see that we are on the home screen. So this acts now as uh, just as it would on a physical iPhone 10. Now I've actually noticed it's very, very responsive, um, surprisingly, being the fact that it's done through um, their site and not actually some kind of local application. It is actually very, very responsive um, and it just acts exactly like a real iPhone would. So you can do anything you would with your physical device, any tests that you would want to do with your physical device. And I'll quickly show you in uh, settings, general and about that this is running iOS 12. And you can see the build number there, that is iOS 12 beta one. Um, so yeah, this is the device. Now, before we go ahead and look at some of the more advanced features like the kernel debugging and SSH, I'm gonna quickly talk about some of the technical details about how this is actually working. So there've been some people who asked me um, whether or not this runs iBoot or if it runs any of the kind of low level things that Apple runs. Um, during their boot chain um, uh, boot process. So the answer is no, this does not run Apple's iBoot. This runs their Corellium's own custom bootloader known as um, iHoot. And um, obviously anything below that is also not from Apple. So it doesn't run Apple's boot ROM, it doesn't run LLB and it doesn't run iBoot. It only runs the kernel and above, which is actually one of the reasons why we have so much um, customization and freedom over what we can do with these devices. Whereas uh, on a real device, it would actually be um, sort of locked down from Apple's um, hardware hardware perspective because of the sort of hardware level security measures they put in. So um, yeah, it does not run any of the things below the kernel. It runs their own bootloader and uh, actually it wouldn't really be possible for them to run anything lower than the kernel because of the requirement of the GID key or the group ID key that's sort of baked into the hardware of every iPhone and you actually need a boot room exploit to be able to retrieve that key. So this um, wouldn't really be feasible um, if they did it that way. So. It's definitely um, obviously positive that we don't have to deal with anything like that because then you don't have to worry about the firmware signing and we have the ability to do all of these um, amazing other things that we, can, that we can't do with a normal phone. So we're gonna take a look at some of these features. So the SSH um, thing here, it gives you this command that you can just literally copy and paste. Now you do need to be connected to the, uh, the VPN to be able to connect to these devices. So we're gonna open up a terminal window and we're gonna SSH into this virtualized iPhone 10. You can see we get a little password prompt. Password is the same as it would be on a physical iPhone. So Alpine, A-L-P-I-N. And we're logged in now as root. So this is essentially what you would do with a normal iPhone if you had a jailbroken device. So we can uh, navigate our way around the root file system, execute commands as we wish. Uh, so you can see we have the standard um, directory layout of the root file system there with the applications. And um, we can have a look inside there and see that these are all the iOS 12 applications. So you will see some of the new ones in here. And um, we can run uname-a to confirm that this is running the 18.0.0 Darwin kernel version, which is it comes with iOS 12. The hardware identifier is iPhone 10 comma three. So it is actually interpreted as a, as a real iPhone hardware identifier. And um, yeah, you can do whatever you would normally if you had a physical iPhone sitting right here. So um, that is the SSH part of it. Now, obviously the more interesting part, which most people uh, are really excited about, and it's probably the biggest selling point of this platform, is the ability to live debug the kernel on any version. So we can actually live debug the iOS 12 kernel now using this command. So we're just gonna 
run this and it's going to attach LLDB to the iOS kernel. So let me just exit out of this and we're going to run this one. It's going to attach to the kernel and once that's loaded we'll be able to do anything we would um, if you had a kind of kernel debugger running on an older phone which uh, people haven't, I don't really think people have been able to do this for um, many years since like the iPhone 4 because I think doing any kind of kernel debugging or to, to the extent that this gives you requires also a bootroom exploit. So I'm not actually too familiar with the LLDB commands, but um, I'm more, more familiar with GDB, but I do know a few. So for example, we can disassemble the current function that we're in, and um, you can see that will print out uh, the instructions for the current function along with an arrow pointed to the where the program counter currently points to. And this basically confirms we're in the kernel mode because we see these special instructions, the MRS instructions, which are only available in um, exception level one, which uh, so they essentially access special registers. Um, and uh, yeah, so we can do a lot of commands do I know. Register read is the equivalent of uh, info registers on a GDB. And this should print out the list of registers along with, their ve uh, along with their values. So you can see where the PC is currently at and all the other values. Um, and obviously we can modify registers as well. So we can do register write. And if we actually write to the PC, so let's just write like some 41441. Um, this should actually, and then if we continue the execution of this of the kernel, it should resume and then immediately crash because obviously the program counter points to 4141 and then if you see that inside the console area of Corellium it prints out the panic log straight into the console so you don't actually have to wait for the device to reboot and then go and look for the panic log file like you would with a physical device it gives you it straight here so you can have um, you can easily and very quickly go through and look at what what caused the crash and see all the register dump as well and you can see their PC is uh, 414141 so makes it much more efficient, much more quick to do any kind of research and testing on the kernel. Um, and that is why, as I said, it's probably the biggest selling point of this platform because it's going to be such a great help to any security researchers or anyone who just wants to dig around iOS um, without having the hassle of having to find a jailbroken device to work with and then worry about sort of not messing it up and making sure that you can do all your tests with that device only. Whereas with this, obviously, you have the ability to use any device on any version and you can create you can keep creating them uh, one after the other. And obviously that means as well, if you are messing with something and you accidentally boot loop the device or brick the device, very simple, what you have to do is go up here to the arrow, delete the device, and then just create another one and you're good to go again. So much, much more efficient uh, way of doing any kind of testing or research on iOS devices. So that's basically what I've got to show you at the moment because uh, as I said, the platform's still kind of under beta and uh, it's not available to the public yet. They do have new features planned and they actually did have, um, I believe, plans for HomePod virtualization and possibly other devices, maybe the Apple Watch as well. Um, and one other thing he did, I, I spoke to uh, Chris Wade, one of the guys uh, on the Corellium team. He also said they're adding support for audio um, on these virtualized devices as well soon. So that should be something uh, to check out as well. So if you want any more info about when this is actually going to be released, then I recommend just following the Twitter account of Corellium. Um, I don't actually know anything about the pricing or the release date at the moment, so just follow their, their Twitter account and have a look at their tweets, uh, as they might tweet something soon in the in the next couple of weeks about when this is actually going to be available to the public. Um, but that is pretty much it. All right, so now I'm going to announce the winners for the book giveaway that I did in my last video. So uh, we're going to just copy the URL to this video and we're going to put it into a random comment picker website. And uh, I actually, yeah, we go put it there. Click search. It should find this video, and we have. 143 comments so these are the number of entries um, and uh, yeah we're just gonna pick three random winners so we're just gonna click the start button here so first winner is this guy here the Ultraman 20 so this is an absolutely huge comment I'm not gonna read this all um, on camera because it's gonna take too long but uh, yeah I appreciate the comment you've won the first copy of the book so I'll contact you on uh, through YouTube and then you have 24 hours to reply and give me a shipping address and I will send the book out to you tomorrow. Um, I'm gonna go for the, let me just screenshot that so I remember who this is. Okay and we're gonna go for the next uh, winner so pick another winner. Start again. Okay so the next winner is Jaitinda Chima and his comment was I would like to step in for Jailbreak Community that's why I should win. So you're the second winner and same for you, I'll contact you through YouTube. And then we're gonna pick another winner, the final winner. And the final winner is Rob Coleman, and his comment was to start my future career job. So those are the three winners for the book giveaway. Um, unfortunately, that is all I'm gonna be giving away at the time for the time being. I know there's a lot of people who obviously still want the book, um, so I'm sorry I can't give one to everyone. 
Uh, you can obviously order one from my website, Zygosec, but um, I'll probably do another giveaway in a couple months' time. So congrats to the winners. I will message you all on YouTube, and you've got 24 hours to send me your shipping address, and then I will send the book out to you. Uh, if you don't reply within 24 hours, then I will have to pick another winner to uh, replace your winning spot. But anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for, uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more, and I will see you next time.